Welcome back to another episode of Elephant Den. It's Ashley. And Alex. And on today's episode, we'll be discussing another Martin Scorsese film. This one came out in 1980. It stars Robert De Niro. It's called Raging, Raging Bull. Bull. Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull follows the life of Jake LaMotta, played by Robert De Niro, a man who's fighting the world while also fighting himself. As opposed to... A lot of films we've talked about on our channel where it's easy to encourage any sort of audience to watch the film based on entertainment value. Mm. Raging Bull is difficult in that sense because it's not such a pleasant watch. Recently, we, we've been focusing on Scorsese's earlier filmography because there's such personal stories. And... I find it interesting that Scorsese had no interest in sports. Mm -hmm. You know, I come from a working class family. My mother and father weren't well educated. Uh, they were, they, there was no tradition of reading in the house, no books. Uh, also, being a sickly child uh, with a uh, very severe asthma, I couldn't play sports. So again, the movie theater, the movie theater and the church, the church and the movie theater. It was Robert De Niro at the time. They've done a few films together at this point, including Taxi Driver where De Niro was so drawn to the story of the real-life boxer Jake, Jake LaMotta. LaMotta. Eventually, they were in a point in their partnership, their career, and they really connected as not just artistic collaborators, but also as people. They felt like brothers. They're, I think, the same age. Scorsese just had a near-death overdose on cocaine, and they got together and they looked at this novel again. The cinematography is Michael Chapman, by the way. Um, a lot of the shots, even including the opening shot of just um, the credits and the title of the film, mm -hmm. has a slow motion shot of Jake Clamata, Robert De Niro, boxing, shadow, shadow box. boxing yeah. in the ring. That tells the whole story already of his life, right? That he's so in his own world, he's He's locked in. He's isolated. He drives everybody away. He's fighting himself. He's fighting himself. Exactly. Um, and you see that throughout the film. A lot of shots you could see are like him just being enclosed. The imagery of the cage and including in that opening shot, the ropes of the ring, how he, he seems like he's trapped in this ring. And it's the ring. The boxing is his career, his profession, yet the ring that he's trapped in exists everywhere he goes, and it's his own mind. Well, he plays the victim throughout the entire film. Right. Like, it, it's, you can't, like, he, he struggles with his own emotions. I mean, you see that throughout the film with his rage, his jealousy, and, and he has to put it on everybody else around him, and that's why it drives everybody away, all the people who do care about him. So, being at your complete first exposure to the film what was your immediate impression as it finished and then how did it kind of marinate with you i like that you mentioned that it is a difficult watch um just because by the end you realize it is a tragedy it, it took a while for me to adjust and really absorb everything um and then once i did it was this immense emotional sadness mm -hmm. in, within me and I just wanted to cry because you feel what's interesting is like he, I mean throughout the entire film you dislike this character Jake yeah. LaMotta like you're not with his actions how he treats women how he's treating his brother and mm -hmm. like just just being so in his mind you're just like I don't like this man but then when it got to the end of the film and you realize that Personally, for me, maybe I believe that he probably will never realize that. Yeah, me too. That he played the victim the entire time when he could have had so much more control in his life and yeah. done so much better for himself. Um, 
It made me feel for him. It's, he lived the rest of his life that way. It's, it's sad. It's deep-rooted insecurity with his masculinity, with his jealousy. It, the movie, that's what it does an amazing job of, if, is you're really frustrated by him. But Jake LaMotta, he had everything. He had, he it had all. He, he, he had, had the fame. He had his wife. Yeah. He had the kids. He had a brother who loved him. He had him. the money. He had the he had, money. And, and that's what also made it really sad is watching how he burned those bridges between people who truly cared about him and were willing to put up with him. Like his brother played excellently by Joe Pesci. Amazing. I to, loved his acting. To like, you know, he betray, Jake betrays him ultimately uh, by thinking that um, Joey s- slept with his wife and when really the whole time he was trying to just look out for him and defend him after being estranged for so many years they run into each other on the street and Jake tries to approach him and yeah it breaks your heart because he's there trying to it's already done it's already broken it's lost the relationship the trust is broken or at least it's so hard in that moment to like just well, let it go for joey especially well and he's it. but you see the struggle of him trying to be he doesn't completely close the door on him or no. anything you know there's still love there's always going to be love and but ultimately it's over and joey's saying you know i'll call you and we'll We'll arrange something over. with the kids and you don't you can't really know for sure you think he probably may not because it's too late and that's what i love about it it hits you personally because you may know people in your life that are like jake lamada unfortunately um and that's why i love that it's it's in a film because you could really see it you like take that step back even if you are a person who is like that and I just love the, the way Martin Scorsese depicts this character. Yeah. Um, because he's not crazy. He's not, like, he's not like a crazy guy like in Taxi Driver. And if anything, he's not... I mean, maybe, yeah, he's hurting the people around him, but he's really just hurting himself. At this point, you realize it's not necessarily a film about boxing, but no. those scenes, the choreography of the boxing and the cinematography you know at the time obviously they were trying to separate themselves from rocky Mm -hmm. well and also i love the backstory of martin scorsese not being a fan of sports and so these cinematography shots are martin scorsese's viewpoint of boxing and it doesn't look so pretty you know there's that those sweat drips there's the close-up shots on their faces there's the blood just like splurting out everywhere mm-hmm. and the, it the, just sorry the camera flashes yeah, right in and between the, noises. the audience being chaotic it's very up close and personal which you're kind of there with them you're never outside the ring and i oh and also knowing that uh the black and white was also to help diffuse all that blood and gore but the boxing sequences throughout, they're all very dreamlike. Some of them have a haze, like you're watching it through literal heat. Yeah. One of my favorite things about the cinematography in this film was how the use of slow motion. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this is why Robert De Niro was really successful with his acting in this film, because he, he holds the beat so well. Mm-hmm. And I think there was a lot of beats in this film to show his rage, his jealousy. His observation, right? Yeah, exactly. Like you exactly. just really settle into his gaze of being jealous. With his combination of like his gaze and his, his inner thoughts with Martin Scorsese and and Michael Chapman's cinematography of the slow motion, Mm. it's such a good presentation of the jealousy because you could feel it. You really felt it. So you know it's Robert De Niro, but I like what you said, and I'd ask you to repeat it, of how you you would really, even like this role, Jake LaMotta, how did you see him, and did you see Robert De Niro in it? It was a sliver of a hair to like notice that it's Robert De Niro. But watching the film, you do get lost. You do believe that it's Jake LaMotta. It's not Robert De Niro. I mean, maybe it's because of the roles that I've seen him play so far. Like um, it's that typical New York American Italian role. He gained that weight, that Mm -hmm. unhealthy weight for the end of the film. 
which is such a remarkable and difficult thing to do yeah. as an actor. I think if you also want to learn how cinematography helps manipulate an audience and understanding visual literacy, which is actually what Martin Scorsese calls it. Um, this is the perfect film for that. Raging Bull really does such a good job in portraying the mind of Jake LaMotta and really letting us understand him and feel for him. What it made me realize was that there was an intelligence, another kind of intelligence, that was trying to tell a story through where the director, the writer, and the cinematographer, where they were focusing your eyes. The certain tools you use, and those tools uh, become part of a vocabulary. Really, I think you really need to know how ideas and emotions are expressed through visual form. It's one of those films that you think about a couple of days later, and you're just, you really appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, and I'm just glad to see that I could watch a film with someone and it may not be pleasant or something that you want to rewatch, but you could appreciate the, what, art. the art and the story it's telling. And this is the, the humanity of it. Yeah. Well, that's everything we have this evening. Thank you so much for watching once again. If you have been enjoying this video and all the other videos we have on our channel talking about other movies, please go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell notification. As we're starting to build the community slowly but surely, we'd love to hear more of your opinions and be more involved in this journey with us. We'd love to know what you want to see, what your opinions are on films. Feel free to share it. And not only on our comments down below, but we also have an app called Letterbox that is non-sponsored. Uh, we just love it so much. It's a great platform for movie lovers. You could share your movie watching experience. You could critique films, comment on other people's critiques, make a list of movies that you want to watch in the future. Our profile is called at Ashley and Alex and then we also have Instagram where you can follow us for more video updates and more about us it's also called at Ashley and Alex so go ahead and give us a follow we'd love to hear from you and we'll catch you next time thank you so much you're awesome